the Colonel Samuel War Society presents the Lexington Alarm. The Colonel Samuel Ward Society hosted a program and activity on Paul Revere and the Lexington Alarm. Included in this program was a conservation feature on the South Country Rail Trail, the site of this activity. Paul Revere's midnight ride was from Boston to Lexington to warn Samuel Adams and John Hancock that the British were coming. The British planned to march out of Boston to Lexington to capture the leaders of the Massachusetts Provincial Congress. The 800 British troops had almost reached Lexington when it became clear that the colonial militia was assembling. The British requested reinforcements from Boston. British General Gage in Boston ordered a second brigade of 1,000 men to leave Boston for Lexington. The first news of the Lexington battle was brought to General Palmer by a messenger early in the morning. When the news reached him from Boston that a second brigade was coming out, he sent the following letter, which has become known to historians as the Lexington Alarm. Here follows a let reading of the letter. Wednesday morning, near 10 of the clock, Watertown. To all the friends of American liberty, be it known that this morning, before break of day, a brigade consisting of about 1,000 to 1,200 men landed at Phipps Farm at Cambridge and marched to Lexington, where they found a company of our colony militia in arms, upon whom they fired without any provocation, and killed six men and wounded four others. By an express from Boston, we find another brigade are now upon their march from Boston, supposed to be about a thousand. The bearer, Israel Bissell, is charged to alarm the country quite to Connecticut, and all persons are desired to furnish him with fresh horses as they may be needed. I have spoken with several persons who have seen the dead and wounded. Pray let the delegates from this colony to Connecticut see this. They know Colonel Foster of Brookfield, one of the delegates. J. Palmer, one of the Committee of Safety. Before noon, Bissell arrived in Worcester. An, an old signal cannon was fired from the hill behind the meeting house, and the bell was rung to alert the outlying towns of important news. Palmer's original letter was copied. The first endorsement added. A true copy taken from the original per order of the Committee of Correspondence for Worcester. April 19, 1775, attested Nathan Baldwin, town clerk. Each town that received the letter would copy the letter. They would then sign that it was a true copy and add their name to that letter. The new copy was sent with the rider to the next town. The copy of the Lexington Alarm, which was copied in Brooklyn, Connecticut, and sent on to Norwich, is on display in the Scottish Rite Masonic Museum and Library in Lexington, Massachusetts. The copies continued on throughout New London, Lyme, Saybrook, and along the coast to New York and beyond. The copy of the alarm, which arrived in Philadelphia five days later and 350 miles later, had been copied and endorsed 17 times and was over four pages long. The news of the battle at Lexington also spread out in other directions from Lexington and Concord. By the same afternoon as the battle, news had reached Providence, Rhode Island and spread out throughout the countryside. People gathered in front of the home of Jabez Bowen, a leader of the Providence militia, waiting for news. By sundown, the men of the militia had gathered, and the officers went to the lieutenant governor, requesting him to give them orders to march towards Boston, because without orders, they were not allowed to cross into Massachusetts. He refused to give them orders, because he had no orders from the governor, who was in Newport. A member of the cadet company set off on horseback to find out if the British regulars had returned to Boston, or if the battle was still going on. Early in the morning of April 20th, Colonel Varnum arrived in Providence with his Greenwich Company of Militia. They continued marching several miles past Pawtucket. It was noon of the next day before the rider returned, but an express from near the scene of the action had already arrived in Rhode Island, stating that the regulars were back in Boston. Colonel Varnum turned his company and marched back to Providence. A witness who saw the company return observed Nathaniel Green with his musket on his shoulder in the ranks as a private. He said, I distinguished Mr. Green, who I, whom I had frequently seen, by the motion of his shoulders in the march as one of his legs was shorter than the other. Colonel Varnum's Kentish Guard were the only Rhode Island company that marched across the colony line into Massachusetts on April 20, 1775. 
Today we are going to reenact our Lexington Alarm Relay on the William C. O'Neill bike path. This bike path runs from West Kingston Station here in North Kingston to Mumford Road in Narragansett near the ocean. This bike path follows the old Narragansett Pier Railroad. The Narragansett Pier Railroad opened in 1876 and connected the mills in Wakefield to New to the New York Railroad here in West Kingston. Passenger service ended in 1952, but freight service continued until the 1970s. In 1991, a conservation group said he changing the abandoned railroad into a bike path, and work began in 1995. The path is 7.8 miles long, and it's the fourth longest bike path in the state of Rhode Island. Colonel Samuel Ward Society members recreated the Lexington Alarm Letter. First described was Pee Wee Patriot Rachel. Our express rider was Registrar Henry. During our bike ride along the South Country bike trail, each member copied the alarm and signatures, just like the real alarm document. In the end, each member got a copy of the alarm and a feather quill. It was a very fun program.